So now that we've got everything unpackaged, we're gonna go ahead and for ease of assembly, I'm going to clamp this down. Uh, however you wanna do it is gonna work. We're gonna start off by opening up the bag of bolts labeled body, and we're gonna take out the nine longer screws that we have in there. Now once we've got those out, we're gonna go ahead and start putting them through the holes in the frame here. And these are going to be holding on the baffles that uh, construct the tooling arm slots. These three black anodized aluminum baffles are what make up the tooling arm slots. So we're gonna go ahead and slide them on. The next piece we're gonna need is this plate right here. This plate is threaded. And we want this little uh, nub that comes out of the top here uh, facing us on the top side. Once we get it positioned uh, and we have all those bolts in there, we can kind of just get them hand tightened down uh, before we move on to tightening them with a wrench. These have a half inch head on them. I think it's fastest to use a ratchet to snug them in. We're gonna take the two ratcheting handles out of their bags, go ahead and thread them in here. The way that these work is you're able to pull up and ratchet them back pretty easily. You pull out on the handle and that means that it disengages from turning the screw and then when you let down, it manipulates the threading. We're gonna move on to working on the tensioning arm. So we're gonna grab this bag of bolts here, labeled tension arm, and we're gonna start off grabbing this other black anodized aluminum spacer block, as well as the other piece that I don't know the name of, but it goes right here, and there's only one, it looks like that. The bolts that we're gonna be using now are one and five eighths inches long. So we're gonna go ahead and take this aluminum spacer, we're gonna put our bolts through, we're gonna put our spacer on, then we're gonna grab this other piece and thread those on, because these two holes right here are tapped. These bolts have a five eighths inch head on them, and we're just gonna snug them down nice and tight. So next we're gonna take this bolt right here, um, it's the only one that looks like it, I think it's in the tensioning arm bag. We're gonna take our tension arm. The tension arm is going to be uh, oriented with the handle facing up and out. And we're gonna need a couple of these Teflon washers as well, along with this lock nut. We're gonna get the bolt started off in the hole that goes through the frame. We're gonna put one washer on. We're gonna get the arm in there. We can get the bolt through that. We're gonna get our other Teflon washer through. Now this will be pretty snug, but there's just enough room for it. There we go. And we'll start threading on this other bolt. These have a three quarter inch head on them. So you're gonna need th two three quarter inch wrenches for it. We don't want it to be too tight. If it's too tight, that tensioning arm isn't going to want to move. Just tight enough that we don't have any side to side play with it. Our next move is going to be taking this air spring here. This is what gives our tensioning arm the tension. Start off, we're gonna move that tensioning arm down and around. We're gonna start threading this through the hole in the side plate for the tooling arms. We'll then move it around. We want the black part on this spring to be sticking up and the shiny piston rod to be sticking down. The next step is to thread the other end of the air spring into the farthest out hole on the tensioning arm. I'm gonna thread that all the way in and then give it a little snug down. We're gonna go ahead and take this black handle here and this 5 16 Allen head screw and thread it through there. So our next step is to take the tensioning wheel. Uh, it is a four inch rubberized wheel with a slight crown to the top. It's different than the drive wheel. The drive wheel has a keyway cut into it and it doesn't have bearings in it. So we're gonna go ahead. We're then gonna take our this piece and we're gonna tighten it down. We're gonna give it a little, little love with the Allen key. Doesn't need to be super tight tight enough that it's not wobbling side to side. And we're then gonna take our tensioning arm here and that goes through that next threaded hole, the next farthest out threaded hole. And we just start threading that through. Once they start to rub and we're getting close, we go ahead and take our spark guard that has our machine tag on it. Let's you know what you got here. You got a steel 2S72 kit grinder. And we're gonna take these two little Allen head screws out, we're gonna get them started through there. There's two holes in this tensioning arm, there's two holes in the spark guard, believe it or not. We're gonna come through here, we're gonna bring that tensioning wheel back and line up the two holes that are threaded in it. Before we take our 3 16 inch Allen wrench, 
and snug those puppies down. I'm gonna go ahead and take this polymer knob here, tighten it on until we start turning that thread. This knob here adjusts the tracking wheel side to side, so that's gonna control where our belt is sitting on the platen. I'm gonna kick it off by opening up our bag labeled platen. We're gonna take out the pivoting spigot, we're gonna take out the brackets that hold the platen onto the pivoting platen contact wheel dynamic arm. And we're gonna have four of these little guys here. Um, they're a 3 16 inch Allen head screw with matching washers for all of them. And this is gonna be what holds our platen onto the arm. So we're gonna start off uh, in the side of the brackets that just has a hole in it. It's not open-ended like the other side. Uh, that's gonna be what's mounted to the actual platen itself. We're not gonna snug it down just yet because we've got quite a few adjustments to make to make sure that it's lined up properly with the wheels and uh, and it's not going to be sticking out too far or shrunken in too far uh, we want it just right next we'll go ahead and we'll take this and we'll move these guys over here and again we're gonna get these snugged down just finger tight so you just want to get it on a flat surface and uh, this is essentially just us making sure that we're getting the platen lined up flat with the wheels here. I like to make sure that uh, the belt's not going to be standing off at all. If anything, I like to raise it up just a little bit um, so that the platen sticks out just a skosh. Um, that means that I'm not going to have any slack belts or anything like that on my platen. And so when I try to contact, I actually am contacting a little bit. And you'll notice we still have the side to side play because we haven't snugged that side down yet. And that's going to come from us just tilting the platen sideways. Uh, and basically, uh, anything that's relatively flat will do. Uh, we just want to have a, a good reference point um, and you can make these adjustments later on when you've got a belt on it and you can run the belt. The platen sticks out just a hair over to the contact wheels uh, and that means that we're not gonna we're not gonna have any slack belt. The belt will be tight on the face of the platen uh, and then side to side it's lined up nice as well. So the next piece that we're gonna be working on is called the spigot. I know it's a funny word. I think it's Australian. And we're gonna tighten it down with this 5 16 Allen wrench. And then the other piece that you'll notice we have on here is a little collar. And that collar basically controls where the platen ends up sitting uh, in relation to where the belt and the tensioning arm and the body is. Our next step is gonna be taking the tooling arm that we've got here and the longer ratcheting handle. We're gonna go ahead and start off by coming down through the top here and tightening that handle down just to the point where it's contacting. We don't wanna tighten it yet because we need to fit that spigot inside there. And if we start tightening it down, then it makes it hard because it clamps down. We'll be able to move into putting the tooling arm into the grinder. So once we're there, we basically wanna make sure that that collar placement on our spigot um, makes it so that we're not able to hit any of the screws or anything there that we have a good standoff distance essentially. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten that thing down just a skosh more um, just to make sure that it's in the right spot. Uh, and that, that, that gap in there is gonna end up being just right around 3 8 of an inch or so. Great, so we've completed the main body of it. The next step is going to be attaching the motor onto it and that is really, really simple. The motors come pre-wired and all we've gotta do is make use of these four little 5 16 Allen head screws uh, and they will they will bolt through here. We'll start them off right in there and then we'll get the motor up here. So we'll go ahead and we'll move this motor to sit right there. Now you'll notice that on the face of the motor there's a ring that goes around the outside and that fits perfectly right inside our slot here. Uh, and then you just want to line up those four bolt holes here with the four bolt holes in the frame. Now this can be a little bit challenging as a one-man operation. Uh, you're g probably gonna want to use uh, some sort of shim in the back. Honestly, uh, this is about the right size. It just needs to be just a little bit um, to keep the motor nice and level as we get those bolts started. Once you get them started, we can get them snugged up with the Allen wrench. Good job, guys. If you followed along and did that, we are nearly done. One last step. We're gonna take this little key off of the body of the motor and it's gonna sit snugly right inside that keyway. Then we're gonna line up the keyway inside the drive wheel. Don't get your thumb caught in there. It's not as fun as it looks. And we're gonna lastly take an eighth inch Allen wrench. We wanna line this up so that the edge of the wheel roughly lines up with the outside of that bolt there. So it'll stand off about, again, three eighths of an inch or so. And we'll get the grub screw inside there tightened down. And that's gonna hold our wheel on and make sure it's not gonna come flying off. That's not as much fun as it sounds. 
And bammo, you've got yourself a finished kit grinder. You're ready to plug and play. Um, lastly, you're probably gonna wanna go ahead and mount your VFD um, wherever you wanna do it, uh, whether it be at the front of your bench or on the wall behind it, or if you wanna make up a little stand so it sits right there. Um, wherever you wanna do it, it's up to you. But you're ready to plug this into any 220, 240 volt outlet and, uh, and get to making some awesome stuff. So thanks for following along, guys. I hope you found this helpful. Um, it took me a couple tries to, to get this figured out. But hopefully, following along, you'll be able to do this in one try. I'll see you on the next one.